Hello people, in this video we want to look at genu valgum. So knock knees. So knees are knocking each other kind of a thing, right? So you can see here the knees are knocking each other. Genu valgum. So genu is bend kind of a thing. You can also refer it to the knee, right? So this is genu valgum. The way I remember it is uh, gum. So it is sticking with kind of gum here. So genu valgum, okay? So uh, this is knocked knee. But actually they are referring to uh, this uh, uh, heels are apart. Okay, that's what they mean. But we will remember with knees are together, not knees. Okay. So, uh, this is a condition where the knees are abnormally approximated. The knees are abnormally approximated and the ab ankles are abnormally divergent. Both are abnormal only. Knees are abnormally approximated and the ankles are abnormally divergent. That makes sense, right? Now, we are looking at uh, knock knee or genu valgum. So it is idiopathic and it is bilateral. See it can be unilateral okay where only one leg is bent inside like this and the other leg is uh, uh, proper. It can happen like that but it is uh, uh, mostly bilateral like this okay. So this is uh, idiopathic they are saying they don't know why it happens and the basically what exactly a commonest type is idiopathic there are other causes. Basically here the epiphysis of the uh, femur the lower epiphysis of the femur and the upper epiphysis of the tibia there is some uh, problem in these two. So this is the epiphysis of the femur up, uh, and this is the epiphysis of the tibia. This is the lower epiphysis of the femur this is the upper epiphysis, epiphysis of the tibia what you see here is the fibula. So, uh, this is the knee joint. So, what they are saying is there is unequal growth, unequal growth, unequal growth of what? Of the uh, uh, two sides of the growth plate of the lower femoral epiphysis and the upper tibial epiphysis. So, I think between the epiphysis you have the growth plate, right? So, growth plate is nothing but physis. Above that you have epiphysis, right? Next to that, you have the epiphysis on one. So, you understood, right? So, what is the problem here? The There are two growth plates here. Where are the two growth plates? Let's see the two growth plates. One growth plate here and the other growth plate here, right? So, there is abnormal or what is the word they are using? Unequal, unequal growth of the two sides of the growth plate of the lower femoral epiphysis and upper tibial epiphysis. Okay. Now, what are the causes of genovalgum? They told you idiopathic, most mostly idiopathic. Otherwise, there can be trauma. Very easy to say trauma, some inflammation, some tumor that is neoplastic condition, bone dysplasia, rheumatoid arthritis, stretching of the joint. Okay. Like uh, some uh, Charcot's disease, paralytic disease, stretching of the joint can happen or cartilage can be thin, okay, like osteoarthritis of the lateral compartment of the knee, osteoarthritis, okay. So, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, everything you write on earth, okay. What are the causes of genovalgum? If somebody asks, you will write this table. What and all will you say? Idiopathic, post-traumatic, uh, neoplasm, uh, inflammatory, uh, bone dysplasia, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, uh, stretching of joint, etc. See, here they have written rickets, okay, rickets also can cause uh, genu uh, valgum. You should understand that in rickets you can also have bow legs. Genu varus also you can have in um, rickets. Bow legs. You remember bow legs? You can have bow legs in uh, rickets. You can also have knock knee. Both you can have in rickets. That is what is strange, right? Both you can have in rickets. But the rickets as such, the name of rickets refers to bow legs, okay? Not the knocked knee. So in this video, what are we looking at? Genu Valgum. What is this? Genu varum. This is the bow leg. Bow leg. This is what you see in rickets mainly. Okay. In rickets you can see knock knee also. Rickets can cause both of these conditions. Please understand. Rickets can cause both of these conditions. It can cause knock knee or bow legs. Both it can cause. Rickets can cause both. Okay. That's it. There's one more terminology. Genu recurvatum. What is genu recurvatum? This is hyperextension of the knee joint. Okay. Polio etc. Because of polio etc. Anyways, so now you have understood this terminology. Let's move on to. Guys, now there's one interesting phenomena called that's a physiologic genu valgum. See, physiologic genu valgum means some amount of genu valgum is there in babies. Okay. And it will correct um, uh, itself. So, up, uh, at the age of 2 to 3 years, you will see genu valgum. Let us see a 2 to 3 year old child. Wait. 
yeah it looks like some amount of uh, genovalgum is there in um, 2 to 3 years and nearly always corrects by the age of 6 by the age of 6 it will correct that is physiologic genovalgum okay let's take this um, because it is more like a 2 year 2 year to 3 year it is there they are saying okay <clears throat> it may be associated with flat feet also this looks like flat feet itself right flat feet the, de the degree of deformity is estimated by measuring the intermalleolar distance with a child lying supine with knees in contact. So, make the child lie supine and you bring the knees in contact. Okay. And uh, with the knees in contact, you will make the child lie down and then you will measure the intermalleolar distance. Okay. That's from the tibia, right? Malleolus. So, intermalleolar uh, distance will give you the degree of the deformity. Okay. Then, genovalgum, if it is associated with rickets, you will see other features of rickets in that kid. Okay, nothing special to say that. How will you treat? What are you trying to treat? Genovalgum. Okay, how will you treat? S typical orthopedics, you will write. Spontaneous recovery occurs in most idiopathic cases. This we already told you, it could be physiologically correct itself. Medical shoe raise is sometimes prescribed okay shoe raise then actually it doesn't help itself it seems it is just helping and satisfying anxious parents so this is very very strange they are just giving it to make the parents feel better because anyways it will spontaneously correct looks like if the intermalleolar distance is 10 centimeter or more by the age of 4 let's make this red if the intermalleolar distance is greater than 10 centimeter or more, if it is 10 centimeter or more by the age of 4, the child may need an operation. Supracondylar closed wedge osteotomy is performed. So, where is the supracondyle? Supracondyle of which bone? Look at this, the bone is like this, right, of the right leg. They are doing some supracondylar closed wedge osteotomy and making it more straight that's what it looks like supracondylar closed wedge osteotomy is performed okay as a treatment for genovalgum so what will you do nothing to do it will correct itself for parent satisfaction you can give a medial rise shoe medial rise shoe what will happen if it is raised medially it will just cosmetically look fine looks like how much 3 by 16 inch it has no proven scientific rational but it is just satisfying the anxious parents if the malleolar intermalleolar distance is 10 centimeter or more by the age of 4 here the age of 4 they are telling then you will need an operation what operation supracondylar closed wedge osteotomy okay so let's take a recap. In this video, we wanted to look at this topic genovalgum or knock knees. So basically here what has happened, the knees are touching each other and the heels are apart. So this is a condition where the knees are approximately, uh, abnormally approximated and the ankles are abnormally divergent. This is uh, mostly idiopathic and bilateral. There is uh, the explanation is that the growth plate, there are two growth plates here, right? There, there is unequal growth on the two sides of the growth plate. Where are the two growth plates here? So, here. Growth plate near this lower epiphysis of femur and upper epiphysis of tibia. So, there is unequal growth, okay? This is the main problem. Why does it happen? Idiopathic, post-traumatic, inflammatory tumor, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, uh, bone dysplasia, Charcot's disease, stretching of the joint, cartilage thinning and also rickets because in rickets you can have uh, uh, genovalgum and genovarum also you can have rickets can either be like this or like this but mostly rickets word refers to the bow legs right and uh, 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 genovalgum clinical features you can see that uh, it is uh, physiologically present in a two to three year old child and it corrects itself by six years ha however um, it can if it doesn't correct then we will see the treatment so basically the degree of the deformity you can measure by making the child's lie supine with the knees touching each other right and then you will measure the intermalleolar distance okay 
So between these malleoli, you will measure the malleolar distance to know the degree of deformity. It should be less than 10 centimeter at age of 4. Then coming to Genu valgum, um, can be secondary to rickets. We already told you that time you can see features of rickets. Okay, that ratchet grocery and all that you'll have to write. Uh, treatment of Genu valgum is that uh, it will spontaneously recover. Recover, we told you. They just give a medial rise, shoe rise um, just to satisfy the parents, but it is not at all scientifically proven. If the intermalleolar distance is greater than 10 centimeter or is, is, is 10 centimeter or more than age of 4, at the age of 4, then the child may need an operation, which is the operation you will need a supracondylar closed wedge osteotomy. Okay. So that's it about Genu valgum. We'll meet you in the next video, guys. Bye bye.